Buenos días a todos. Good morning. Well, welcome to CyberCamp, a big cybersecurity event organized by INCIBE. I think that it is the best event that we have in Spain regarding cybersecurity technical sessions. It's for all type of audience, families, uh, experts, etc. So my presentation is a scientific contribution called Preventive Emerging Model in order to produce secure software. This is uh, with some a project done by Jose Carlos Sancho, Andres Caro, Pablo Garcia, and Jose Andres Felix. We presented this in the cyber security sessions of Cáceres, and it was selected in order to be presented here in this big event. First of all, I would like to introduce myself, but it doesn't make sense that I introduce just myself, taking into account that there is a whole team of people working together behind this project. So uh, we have Andres Caro, for example, who is our a director from Bionex UNESP and a professor in the Extremadura University. He is leading the work in our um, engineering tasks. Then uh, we have uh, the manager of uh, we have Maravilla, who is a professor of the a professor of the University of Extremadura, together with Juan Pedro Torre, and she is working in data mining applied to Iberic Ham, which is something great that we have in Extremadura. I don't want to forget about Miguel Sanchez, who is in charge of the Bionet department, where I used to work. And also to people, Alberto Irene, who are working as research technicians. They are students that just finished their degree studies, and nowadays they are studying a master's degree in computing engineering, and they are starting working in this research. And also two other people, Jose Andres Félix and Andres Quesada from VNECT, uh, and I will explain later the research contribution that they are providing. They are outside the university and they are in charge together with Andres and Pablo to lead all the works and projects that are done within this university department in which we are working. They are working in real companies, in, in real business, and we can apply our knowledge in this uh, sector. So without them, this wouldn't be possible. And we would like to thank, the, thank them for participating and for working with us for the last five years. As I've said before, this scientific contribution has received many awards in the 2019 Cyber Security Conference, etc. And now we are here in Cyber Camp. However, I think we have to look back to, in order to analyze the work that we've been doing in the last years, seeing the National Cyber Security Conference of Granada to the different uh, other editions of this conference in the following years. But what I mean is that this work is the result of all the contribution and all the works that we've done in all these um, scholar and scientific conferences. So what's the real context or framework of this contribution? Well, this is something quite innovative because we are doing, we are sharing knowledge with business, with the company. We think that we are a success case regarding joining university research and companies. Unext is an IBM subsidiary, and. Uh, we have a partnership with the University of Extremadura, and therefore everything that we are researching is going to be directly applied in companies. And VNEX defends and uh, advocates cybersecurity, and they have a department of cybersecurity which links IT and G JBS, uh, GBS. And in the university department, we support with the research that we are doing. Here you can see a cyber attack map. 
So now we know that the number of cyber attacks being produced are increasing. Also, the level of sophistication, as you can see in the video that I am showing you, what we can see here are, you can see here a lot of cyber attacks and uh, these cyber attacks are produced mainly between big countries or very powerful countries. So we've seen the attacks in Silicon Valley, also in the west side of the US. And here in this map, we can analyze real time all these type of attacks that are taking place with a specific purpose. So we can more or less analyze type of attacks so when we started five years ago, our main idea was to try to improve the production of secure software. And regarding the methodology being used traditionally, this was not possible. So our objective, therefore, is to approach in an innovative way a completely preventive model. But not just because the number of cyber attacks are increasing, but also because, as we are seeing in the graph, on the right, when we are developing a software and when we are find vulnerabilities, the latest we find these vulnerabilities, the hardest it is going to be to correct them. And these, the, the, the cost is also going to be exponential. So we need to try to compare a classic and reactive model between a preventive and a feedback model that improves continuously the different processes. It's important for companies not to lose the money and not to get concerned about this. And uh, how did this start? So we started doing a comparative of the different frameworks or secure models that exist so far. There are not many, but it is true that we are finding more and more in the market. So we decided to compare different models, such as Microsoft models, models from Oracle, OpenSAM, or WASP. And after analyzing all these models, what we did was a comparative between their different activities. And therefore, we understood that if these activities were similar in different models, they needed to be in the model that we were going to create. We did also other different analyses because technology and time matters. And uh, we did different analyses in order to understand some vulnerabilities of these models. And we, therefore, could introduce three activities that were not included in all their models, such as a security observatory, repository and uh, management of knowledge, and project status. This comparative was presented in the National Conference of Cybersecurity of Granada in 2016, organized by José Antonio, Pedro García, Margarita, Marta Noemi, etc. So our next step after having identified these activities was to create our own development areas. All these activities were divided depending on the life cycle stage in which they intervened, but also depending on the development areas that could affect this model, for example, regarding policies. This is going to be related to defining objectives and global guidelines of a project. It's not the same thing to have a project dealing with um, medical data than uh, having a, a model dealing with other less sensitive data. Also regarding policies, uh, training is included. UNEX and Extremadura University have worked together very hard in order to have a tool that could be used to improve the training of a secure software. So we, because we need to know the risk knowledge. It's not the same thing to analyze the risk of a bank up, banking app than uh, the, the risk of a, uh, selling up. Probably the most technical issue is the methodology that we are using. And what we are doing is incorporating in the life cycle different activities that 
are going to allow us to obtain security requirements, uh, modeling threats. We will see this later. Having a secure design, which is being reviewed, reviewed. Also having uh, uh, code analysis and also security testing done by a, a team different than the development team. We also have other key development areas which are monitoring that will allow us to do a continuous assessment of previous activities and uh, measure the metrics that these activities are going to deliver. And also, uh, we have another development area, which is a security observatory. Um, I don't have to explain to you how technology and cyber attacks are uh, progressing. They are more and more uh, advanced. So we need to to study continuously new attacks and new methodologies that are being used. At the end, it's going to provide us with a continuous learning of the situation and the vulnerabilities that, that are detected in a reactive phase will become preventive. Whenever I find a vulnerability, we, this is going to be incorporated to our initial life cycle. Well, I didn't say it, said that this uh, contribution was also presented in Salamanca in the CEDI in 2016. And this is our development model. This is the same thing I mentioned before. We, we, you can see here the four development areas and 14 activities. And now we are going to see how methodology plays a role in the software development phase. But I would like to emphasize that the model has a feedback because the observatory and the repository allow us to feedback the initial phases of our life cycle. It is also preventive because it takes into account security since the first stage of the project since, since the beginning. But before it was different, this started in the security t testing. This model is also uh, comprehensive and it is flexible too. So ideally, we, we should apply all these activities, but there are companies that are using already the model and they just select the activities that they find more convenient for their development. Also, we need to have a implementation plan in every company. This implementation plan includes five stages. First, we have an initial contextualization, which is done through a questionnaire. And this allows us to, be in, to, to have a first contact with the models that want to, uh, with, the, with the projects that want to apply this model. And we try to know the tools that clients are using and the objective that they want to meet with this model. Secondly, once we've decided that the model is going to be applied in a certain way and once we know the specificities of each client, we start with training and building of secured ecosystem. We train the developers, the IT staff, and in parallel, we start preparing an ecosystem with different tools that are going to help us to integrate these activities and check um, security issues. Once this ecosystem is ready, before integrating the model, we have to do a security assessment. This is going to allow us to uh, find out the status of each project. We don't have to do a, an audit of the whole application. We can just audit different parts of the app that can be used in the model. Then we continue with the integration of the security model, definition of good practices, etc. And finally, we um, go to the stage of continuous improvement through feedback um, of each uh, life cycle stage. This was presented in the 2017 National Conference on Cybersecurity, which took place in the Juan Carlos I University, organized by Marta Beltran. 
es que abogamos muchísimo por we, la we also a for, uh, uh, se security training. Here, Here I'm going to show you a video of a small tool done for secure software development. There are many other tools which are similar, but the advantage of this tool that we've developed is that it allows you to it allows you to see a protected and a vulnerable scenario. So here we have an SQL injection in the vulnerable uh, scenario and in the non-vulnerable scenario we are going to do the same injection we are going to see that this is not possible and the, at the bottom you can see the code the you can see both codes and you can see the difference and what's wrong and what's right so this was developed in a, 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 thanks to the learning of our students and uh, we came up with five vulnerabilities that are exploded. Here, for example, we have an XSS attack, which is going to deny access to the service and therefore the application will stop working. This contribution was presented in the conference uh, that took place in Cáceres. And the vulnerable scenario is not going to allow us to do this XSS injection because they have the right controls uh, enabled. So after training, I was mentioning that the, second, that the next step was building a secure ecosystem, therefore we need a lot of tools. These are some of the tools that we can use. Some of them are open source, some of them are um, property um, tools, and now uh, the client decides which tools to use. We do not commit to a single tool. Normally, we use Jenkins, uh, SAS, etc. And it depends on functionality and security, of course. This tool um, comparison was presented in the National uh, Conference on Cybersecurity 2018, organized by the University of Mondragon. This model integration regarding, uh, regarding the different activities, we um, moved from uh, security requirements to design review, etc. And there are two activities which are threat modeling and security, sorry, and development review. That are the only um, steps that take place in two stages, because threat modeling it is very important. The sooner we can start with that, the better. And for the development, review of development, we don't have to start with all the developments in order to start the coding. We can do it earlier. So the objective here is to do guiding development so that activities are well planned and categorized in time. Another issue that we take care of is developing a tool for uh, security requirements. This was presented in the Granada Brexit organized by the Pedro Ángel Pedro team. And uh, when we have these functional requirements in companies, we find this situation. So the functional requirement documents may have 25 pages and just half a page of security requirements. So this is wrong. It's true that um, obtaining security requirements is not easy, but thanks to this tool and following certain functional questions at the end, we are able to identify also the security requirements. For example, if an application has a login, this login is going to have by default different security requirements. And with this tool in the end, we can work more easily and we can have more security requirements. So threat modeling is the first phase that we use within the life cycle in order to show the developers the main uh, vulnerabilities that they may find and we use the Microsoft Threat Modeling tool in order to generate these links with threats. 
We are also working with a vulnerability taxonomy, so our objective is to have a traceability of requirements. Uh, and and there, for example, here in this case, the taxonomy regarding injections, we may find different type of injections. And the objective is to generate good development practice. This is going to help a developer that may not know how to develop that by default. So this was presented in the first international Agora conference. And uh, here you can have an example of a uh, Java um, scenario. One of them is secure and the other one is vulnerable. Also, within these tools that we've mentioned, we've integrated Sonar. And while we are developing Sonar, it may detect potential vulnerabilities that may be found in our codes. So now I'm going to give a description of the context. The client, in this case, is an electrical company with high uh, criti criticality because it, can, it is in charge of providing electricity to many different neighborhoods. They are using an agile methodology. And so what we did was the following. We did a module without following without um, following that methodology. And we've done a second module in which we've trained people and we've implemented the model following the implementation plan that I've mentioned before. This was presented in the International Conference on Cybersecurity 2019, organized by the University of Rey Juan Carlos. And, uh, and together with the University of Extremadura and the Complutense University. The methodology of the experiment is the following. We have the classical scenario, the one developed without security. So first stage is development, second audit, and third correction, and measuring correction timings. And the emerging methodology that we've presented is security training, build, um, secure ecosystem building, secure development, audit, and correction. Now we're going to compare both models. The objective is to measure performance and security indicators. The first scenario is uh, cost per phase without applying security. We've measured the cost, we've audited that, and we analyzed the cost implied in finding vulnerabilities and which vulnerabilities we found. Then we have an, a scenario which analyzes the cost per phase with security implemented, and also we measure the timing, the times, uh, the time allocated to the, the security to the correction of security failures, and the cost involved with that. So the ViewNext Vue testing team in Salamanca, led by Veronica and Victor, was in charge of looking for these security indicators. And now we are going to see the performance. In the classical scenario, we found 19 vulnerabilities, 7 uh, development and 12 architecture. And, and we stopped looking for more because we had enough. In the emerging scenario, after implementing the new methodology, we did a more comprehensive analysis and we found six vulnerabilities. One of them was uh, related to development and five, the other five related to architecture. So as you can see, the criticality of vulnerabilities changes too. In the classical scenario, we can see that vulnerabilities are more critical than emerging uh, than the emerging scenario. We've also measured the different uh, timing per development phases in both scenarios, and we've obtained, extracted some percentages. In the graph, you can see that there is an increase in the initial, in initial stages of the emerging scenario. Why? Because we are 
They devoting more time to these activities. But in the correction stage, as we've taken into account security, we don't have, we have barely vulnerabilities and we don't have to correct many things. So this is why we see this difference regarding timing. As for the type of vulnerabilities, I've mentioned this before. And well, this, has, this is the time that we needed to use. Uh, so, so, regarding my final conclusions, my final conclusion is that when we have applied the emerging model, we've seen that there was a reduction of uh, vulnerabilities of 66%, and this also reduced the uh, the impact of these vulnerabilities. And in the end, this is the key that shows that the model that we've prepared, that we've developed, that we've planned, and that we've developed systematically is better than a classical reactive model, which doesn't take into account security from the beginning. I mean, it was it is an obvious conclusion, but we needed to prove it. Regarding the audit, there is a less impact and greater security when incorporating security since early phases. So, so doing te uh, frequent tests and check checkups check is better than uh, doing a final checkup. And also a different conclusion is that paying more attention to the analysis reduces drastically the developing time. We didn't expect to have this conclusion, but it happened that because we as we did um, spend more time doing analysis, everything was clearer afterwards. Regarding the conclusions to our team, we could see that we've uh, raised an awareness regarding the need of uh, having secure development. And also uh, another conclusion that we obtained is that sometimes there is some uncertainty regarding modules developed in advance, and now that these teams know how to develop in a secure way, they started considering that the models previously designed may not be as secured. And this is it. In case you have any questions, I will be glad to answer to them. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, José Carlos. Damos paso ahora al turno de preguntas. So, thank you, José Carlos. And now we are going to give you the floor. If you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. We are going to give you a microphone in, one, in case you want to ask something. We would like to encourage you to uh, ask questions or to comment anything you want to say. If you want uh, him to explain into further detail a specific issue. Well, thank you very much, Jose Carlos, for this presentation. Okay, I think we have a question actually. Well, first of all, I would like to, con to congratulate you for the presentation. And I wanted to ask you about the Security Observatory. What is this about exactly? Are you checking the market continuously? Are you checking in case there are any vulnerabilities and you test your system with these vulnerabilities? What, that, what is it exactly? Well, thank you. So it is true that I haven't mentioned exactly what the observatory is, because the security observatory, besides being one of the activities that we've created in this emerging model, we think that it is very important because we need to do a continuous monitoring. So frequently we're using tools or libraries from third parties, and uh, Therefore, we are detecting new vulnerabilities all the time, continuously. So, taking into account the 10 most exploited vulnerabilities, one of them, the ninth one, is the exploitation of vulnerabilities in third parties' components. 
So we are working in order to monitor these new vulnerabilities and of course we try to, uh, to implement patches for these vulnerabilities in the, in the, the CERN. They are doing a great job in order to cover that too. And they provide the they provide good practices that we must follow and that we must take into account when these vulnerabilities are found because some sometimes we may find them in our own projects but sometimes we are going to find them they are going to uh, be found by third parties by other entities which are doing a great job and we apply them so it is essential to do a continuous monitoring of vulnerabilities. We are not checking the market because that would be impossible, but we try to pay attention to different possibilities that may emerge. And uh, it's true that nowadays, because of the economic situation that companies are experiencing and everyone open source code is being used more and more. So if we can analyze that in order to see the vulnerabilities, we can attack these vulnerabilities better in other open source components that are used by other companies. So we are trying to continuously monitor, the, especially the uh, incident response center and uh, the data from other entities or institutions that publish this type of information. Are there any other questions? Well, as I can see that there are many students here, I'd like to encourage you to pay attention to the cybersecurity sector because it is a field with a lot of potential and that needs a lot of talent. So if you have the chance to work in this sector, I would like to encourage you to do so because you will have, uh, work, you will have work for sure.